Welcome to the latest Wax Ecstatic Pack Break. I'm your host, Matt Salmon, and yeah, we're going to open up a pack for this particular video extravaganza, all part of our next podcast on Friday, January 31st. We're going to open up this bad boy from 1982, but I'm not going to open it just because it's fun to open up an old pack of cards. Granted, this was sitting in my stash for probably a couple of years now, just part of a cello pack lot that I bought on eBay a while back. Now, we're going to open up this pack because 1982 was the last year of the first run of multiplayer rookie cards. It's something that happened uh, starting in the early 1960s, I believe, because of expansion with four new teams over the 1961 and 62 seasons. Rather than make 100 new cards for all the players that were going to be playing for these teams, as well as some of the young prospects they were going to develop, Tops determined, well, let's cut some corners here. Let's feature some of these younger players as prospects and future stars. And thus was born the multiplayer rookie card. And it ran all the way up, like I said, to 1982, where Tops was embarrassed by the Cal Ripken Jr. rookie card, where you had Ripken and two other Oriole farmhands that you probably didn't know much about or really didn't care about. So Tops sheepishly had to make a Ripken quote-unquote first Tops card in the traded set in 1982. And I don't think it's a coincidence by 1983, the multiplayer card was gone for rookies. Now that would be the case up until 1992, where once again, you're looking at uh, the card set trying not to be too big, even though rookies were still the big thing. And with expansion in 1993, rather than expand a set to 850 cards, or as the case may be, some number around there, Topps was able to keep it at 792 for the base set, while putting notable rookie players such as Mike Piazza on a shared rookie card, or Chipper Jones, uh, as was the case in 1992, on a shared card with three other players. Now, it's interesting from year to year, and we'll discuss this on the program this week, how the rookie uh, multiplayer cards shifted between players from one team or one organization, uh, and another year it might be players playing the same position. So it varied from year to year, and some of the cards that came around had an interesting combination of rookie players. Sometimes you had a major star coupled with somebody that you didn't really know about. And the Ripken example is the best one off the top of my head, although as we'll discuss, there are several other notable ones from that time period. Also, if you look back at uh, some of the other cards, especially in the late 60s and early 70s, again, with all this extra talent through expansion teams, a lot of the prospects featured on these cards either never had a lengthy major league career, or in some cases, didn't have a major league career at all. Maybe they were an expansion draft pick and they were featured on a Topps card with a major league team logo airbrushed on, but they never saw the light of day in the big leagues. So there were a lot of misses, a few hits, and a few notable shared rookie cards, not just the Ripken one, but like I said, we'll discuss Pete Rose in 1963, Phil Necro in 1965, uh, also uh, uh, Nolan Ryan in 1968, uh, Tom Seaver as well in 1967, some very infamous multiplayer rookie cards. Now this is what I call the Andrew Ridgely effect. And again, I have to thank my friend, Coach Mike McLaughlin, who suggested this topic of the show. Uh, why would I call this the Andrew Ridgely effect? Well, who is Andrew Ridgely? Well, if you grew up in the 80s, perhaps you recall the pop music duo Wham! Had a lot of big hits in the early to mid 80s. Well, Wham! is most remembered as George Michael and the other guy. Well, the other guy was Andrew Ridgely. And while George Michael would go on to a great solo career and, and would be uh, well-remembered and loved in the disco pop community up until his death a few years ago, at the same time, Andrew Ridgely just kind of quietly faded off into the background. But don't feel bad for Andrew Ridgely. He's still making a ton of money off the song Careless Whisper, which he wrote 
And ironically, George Michael sang as a solo artist. But anywho, uh, the Andrew Ridgely effect on some of these rookie cards. Now, as you'll see, uh, some of these, uh, these are from my personal collection. Some of them are really beaten up here, uh, which is why I don't have them in individual card holders. But uh, 1972, here you go, your rookie Red Sox stars. The big one here, Carlton Fisk, of course, a Hall of Fame catcher and noted red ass. Uh, let's not poo-poo Cecil Cooper. Cooper had a pretty uh, noteworthy career, mostly with the Milwaukee Brewers in the late 70s and early 80s. But I would venture to say that the Andrew Ridgely of this card is Mike Garman. So we're going to get to know Mike Garman a little bit in this week's program. Let's fast forward. 1974. So here, again, we went from a team to a position, rookie infielders. Now, by far, the four here that uh, stand out the most, or of the four here, the one that stands out the most is Frank White, who had a great career uh, later on with uh, the Kansas City Royals, but also had some time with Cincinnati. So he is the star of these four. And of course, Andy Thornton uh, had a pretty good career as well. But what about John Knox or Terry Hughes? So we'll talk about these two. I would venture to say these are the Andrew Ridgely's of this particular 74 Tops card. 1975, well, no doubt who the star of this catcher's dash outfielder's card is. And yes, Gary Carter had some time in the outfield before settling in as a catcher with the Expos and later the Mets and Giants and Dodgers. But what about Leon Roberts or Mark Hill or Dan Meyer? Boy, when you look at Gary Carter up here, I mean, these three guys just pale in comparison. Much could be said about a future teammate of Gary Carter's. Andre Dawson, this is a 77 Tops Rookies Outfielders card. So Dawson, of course, had the Hall of Fame career. We know Denny Walling had a pretty lengthy career. A lot of people will remember him from his days with Houston Astros in the mid to late 80s. But John Scott, what about Gene Richards? So here are a couple of Andrew Ridleys we'll talk about on the program. Now, not every card featured an Andrew Ridley. Let me bring you the 78 Tops Rookie Catcher's card. As you can see, pretty worn down. I think I spent 25 cents on this one. Dale Murphy, who started as a catcher, but his throws to second always ended up in center field. So he ended up in center field. He, of course, would be a Hall of Fame worthy outfielder. But let's look at the other guys in this card. Lance Parrish, phenomenal career. Ernie Witt, a steady presence behind the plate for the Blue Jays. Even Bo Diaz, while he may be the least of the four in terms of major league careers, Diaz played a very long time and was quite the capable catcher, sometimes as a starter or as a dependable backup. So not every card had the Andrew Ridgely. But alas, we come to 1982. And here's a Dave Henderson rookie card. Uh, Reggie Walton, you may remember him, but Dave Edler? The Mariners didn't have a lot to be proud of uh, in terms of prospects in the early 1980s, so... We'll get to know a couple of these guys a little better. We know about the late Hindu, but what about these guys? So without further ado, let's see through this 82 top cello pack if we can find, perhaps, a Cal Ripken Jr. rookie card, or maybe another Dave Henderson card. We do find gum, of course. Oh, look at that. Poor Louis Salazar, slathered in that big brick of gum that Topps used in 1981 and 82. And that look on Louis's face is like, what the hell is that? I had to breathe that for the last 38 years? Sorry, Louis. We start with fellow Padre, Steve Mira. Bobby Brown, the ball player, not the rapper. Don Sutton in action, much like the stripes on that Astros uniform. Larry Bradford of the Braves. We've got Fred Brining of the Giants, the all-star Bruce Souter, who looks like he ate some bad clams for lunch. Another future all-star reliever, this time with the Cubs, Lee Smith. Ed Lynch of the Mets, not quite uh, the plethora of 82 Donruss Ed Lynch cards we got in that forced fun pack. Steve Braun of the Cardinals. Got Dusty Baker, and the only thing missing here is a toothpick. You can see he's sizing up his next high five here with the Dodgers. Doyle Alexander. Boy, we mentioned Doyle Alexander in our last show, didn't we? Uh, always part of some kind of baseball trivia as a guy traded for somebody better known. Mike Witt, one of the more underrated pitchers 
of the uh, mid to late 1980s with the California Angels. This was pre-mustache Mike Witt, too. We've got Ron Jackson of the Detroit Tigers. Thad Bosley of the Milwaukee Brewers. That's a nice airbrush job there. Look at that. Nice little puffy trucker hat look. In fact, let's see, let's flip it over. Yeah, it came from the White Sox. I could tell by the color of that t-shirt. All right, we've got Tom Seaver in action. It looks like at Shea Stadium, too, with that Schaefer beer sign. The Candyman, John Candelaria, looking damn glad to be there. Raleigh Eastwick of the Cubs. Jimmy Slayton of the Brewers. Nice, uh, nice little hair too there. Boy, it was 1982 for sure. Carney Lansford with the Boston Red Sox. Of course, uh, better known for his time with the Oakland A's later, but here he is uh, before Oakland and after the Angels. Fred Pastore of the Reds. We've got the uh, Polish Cannon here and Greg Luzinski in action. A young Lloyd Mosby uh, with the Toronto Blue Jays. Look at that. We got Gator, Ron Guidry, Jim Bibby. Some fun stories about Jim Bibby we can't share in front of the kids. Al Holland of the Giants. We've got Pops Willie Stargell in action. Rodney Scott of the Expos and teammate Stan Bonson. Okay, so uh, no shared rookie cards in that pack, but still a fun one. And quite a few Hall of Famers in there. Let's see. You got Don Sutton. Uh, Bruce Souter, Lee Smith, who else would be getting there? Dusty Baker. Okay, so he's not a Hall of Famer. I had a hell of a career, though. Tom Seaver, Candyman had a good career. Um, you know, I don't want to overlook uh, Lansford. He had a good career, too. Luzinski, Mosby, Guidry, Stargell. Pretty good group of cards there in that pack. But even though we didn't have uh, any of the multi-rookie cards there, and certainly not a Cal Ripken Jr. card, we will be getting to know... Mike Garman, Terry Hughes, John Knox. I don't know if we'll get to know all three of these guys. I'll pick one from the Gary Carter card. I'm looking at Gene Richards in particular. Maybe we'll have time for John Scott. And uh, either Reggie Walton or Dave Edler. We'll get to know some Andrew Ridgeleys in this next podcast. Again, it'll be this Friday, January 31st via Audio Boom and also wherever our RSS feed is transmitted to, Apple Podcast, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Stitcher, Blueberry, Spotify, and Google Play. I'm Matt Salmon. Thanks for watching this video break of Wax Ecstatic.